Hey everybody, good evening and welcome. I'm Tim Brzezinski and in this uh, screencast I'm going to show you how you can use GeoGebra to create a very basic uh, formative assessment resource for your students. But the most important thing here is that that resource gives the student instant feedback. I mean, the feedback we're going to show is going to be very basic, you know, correct, not correct, okay? We're going to do a very basic one tonight and then in a, a few days I'm going to show you how I made a more kind of complex one, right, involving slope. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna screen share and we'll get ready to rock and roll. There's our fractal going on. So uh, I'm actually, when I create, I actually create in version five of GeoGebra here, all right? And so that's the software version. But everything that I'm gonna show you here, you can also do uh, online, okay? With the apps online here, the graphing calculator app or the geometry app say. But I'm just in GeoGebra Classic 5, the software version here on my MacBook Pro. And in this resource we create, I'm gonna try to make this quick. Uh, we're just going to simply uh, have GeoGebra generate two integers, okay, and then have the GeoGebra resource prompt the student to find the sum of those integers without a calculator. The student enters in the sum, and then it's either correct or not correct. Again, very, very basic tonight. So in order, in order to do that, I need to use GeoGebra's random number generator. So I can say A, type in input A equals random, right, so I can say random between. GeoGebra has uh, thousands of commands. Just pick the one you want, right? So negative 10, say, to 10. All right, that's a random number there. And let's let B be another random number. Random between negative 10 and 10, right? And now let's actually find the sum. Just type A plus B, right? Obviously, that's the sum right there, okay? But now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to text here and I'm just gonna say the directions and say, hey, you know, find the sum of the, say find the indicated sum without use of a calculator. Okay, so there it goes. Take that right there. Now, I don't need to show the axes, of course. I can hide those, right-clicking. But uh, I like to keep the grid lines when I create stuff kind of because it kind of helps me, you know, uh, organize, like make it, you know, lined up, if you will. All right, so now we know this. So, so how do we regenerate those numbers? That's a good question. That's going to be uh, done with what we call a button here. But before we do that, all right, what I actually need to do is make a slider. Now, this is what's not obvious, okay? The student needs to answer the question. Right, I'm going to ask them what a plus b is, or four plus negative a is in this particular case, right? But the student needs a way to enter that, enter what they think. Okay, now that would be done through an input box, but before I do the box, I have to put a slider in GeoGebra. So I'll just do that. Now, the greatest sum that's going to pop up is 20, right? If it's 10 and 10, and the least sum that will that this could sum to is um, negative 20 in the other extreme case here. So I'm going to make a, another one called D here, and I'll just let it go from, say, negative 50 to 50. And you're thinking, Tim, why are you doing that? And I'm, I'll explain. Okay. Now, granted, this is a slider. Kids aren't even going to see this. Okay. But here's why I did this. All right. I, I now need to make an input box that's linked to slider D. Okay. In like two minutes, it's all going to make sense to you, I promise. Okay? So the caption of that input box is sum equals. Now I'm going to link it to D here. Okay? And hit OK. Now um, I'm going to right-click, unfix it. I'm going to move it over here more, right? And um, if I right-click, go to Properties where it says style, I mean, that, that length of 20 is way too long for me. Five should do it, no problem, right? So you can see sort of right there, it's kind of, um, you know, right there. But see, look, this now allows me to change the slider without dragging it. I can make it negative eight, see how it changes. I can make it negative 10, and so on and so forth, okay? The student's gonna type the sum in here, okay? And now I'm gonna make a text box that is labeled correct. And I can make another one that says not correct. So correct. Text is still highlighted. Now I say try again. Right? Okay. So those are the two those are the two options here. The problem is going to regenerate. 
of, um, we're going to have to ask what numbers to add here. So let's actually do just that now. So I'm going to go here, make a text, go here. And now notice here, right, I want to add A and B. That's dynamic text right there, the A and B changes. So I could just touch A over here. See, A goes in there. It says 4 plus, and I could choose B here, right? Or I could go to objects here. The GeoGebra objects are here that I could select them. I hit OK. Move. And so now I can make this a lot. Let me go here. I love this little toggle there. A lot of people don't see it when they're working in version 5. But let's make this kind of large. All right. And I can make this uh, input box large itself too, right? So obviously we know the sum can't be negative 10, but you know, I can take these and make it large here. Just go quickly. All right. Again, I'm I'm creating the screencast because I get asked by lots of people, how do you make those? So I figured if I can uh, give them a video link here instead of writing 8,000 emails that people aren't going to read anyway, it makes uh, everybody's life easier. It's easier to watch a video. All right, now, so I want I want this correct box to show up when this when this number is actually the sum of these two, right? And I want the try again text box to appear if this is not equal to that, right? So let's think about this logically, okay? This number correct can only appear if this number here. Let's think, what is this number called in GeoGebra? If you said D, you're absolutely correct. That's gonna that correct, but that text box is gonna show up if this number d that I that I have with you know slider here is equal to the sum of a and b, which is obviously four here, right? So to do that, what I do is I right click on the correct box, go to object properties, and at the very end here, there is a tab that says advanced. Okay. And this advanced tab, okay, the condition to show object is the first thing that shows up. I want this box to only show up if the student enters the correct sum, right? So that is in the case if D is equal, equal. Now, a double equals here is a Boolean operator. We call that, it's like a logical operator here. I can't just say D equals, but D, is D equal to, it's like true or false, yes or no. Is D equal, equal to A plus B? That's one way I could see how it disappeared, right? Because why? This number D here is not the sum of A and B, or I could actually say D equals equals C, but I, I, don't, even, I don't even need that. I can actually just delete that C. It's not even needed here, all right? And right here, the try again box is going to show up. I'll put it right where the correct was. I'll right-click it, object properties. Now, when do I want to show this try again? Well, when it's not equal to, right? When D is not equal to, uh, the not equal to shortcut is an exclamation mark in an equal sign. Or if you, if you wish, you could actually find it over here, right? The not, um, the not symbol is, where is it? It's in here somewhere right there. Okay. So D is not, is, is uh, I'm sorry, not equal to, it's this one. Sorry. <laughs> so D is not equal to, I'll just use this one here. It'll change anyway. D is not equal to A plus B, right? And notice how it stays, right? So again, let me look at the correct button here. Right, I'll right click on it. This is gonna this is gonna show up only if D is truly equal to the sum A plus B. And my try again text box is only gonna appear. See if D is not equal to A plus B. So let's actually try typing in the correct sum and see what happens. You know, at the sum there's got to be negative four, right? And see, oh, correct. Whoa, there we go. So now I can actually right click on the slider not show up because the students don't need to really see that. So now what I need to do is simply make, um, I simply need to make a button that actually generates a new problem now. All right, otherwise it's always going to stay like this or reload, when it, whatever. So right now I'm going to go to the button here and just click in the white. And I'm just going to title this button, caption it, new problem. And here's the script you want to type in a problem like this. Anytime you use GeoGebra to generate a random number like A and B were defined as random, between, like it's a random integer between those two, so is B. Anytime any GeoGebra construction that you make has random uh, randomization and you put a button in there, the command to type to wipe out and just put everything in like different is update construction. Open bracket, close bracket. That command, when, when this button will be hit, it'll make those numbers change. 
uh, value with a capital S and V. That value, uh, D, remember D was the slider there that the students are controlling there, right there, to, to question mark, which means I'm actually going to make it undefined. So what this means is that when the button appears and I click it, it's going to make new, brand new numbers, and it's going to put a question mark in this little input box there. Okay, so watch what happens. All right, I got to select the move tool again. You see here? Try again, try again. Now, obviously, the try again is appearing because this is not equal to right a uh, a plus b here. But let's let's try this again. No pun intended. So that's going to be negative four. Ah, correct. New problem. Oh, that's going to be negative nine. Now the the try agains are changing to correct. Seven plus eight, fifteen, and so it goes. Okay, that looks pretty good, and that's how I do. Uh, two minutes to do that, and we'll uh, call it quits to the video here. So I can close out this algebra view, right? I can actually make my applet size much uh, much smaller here, or whatever. It, it doesn't matter at this point. But regardless, there it is, okay? Let me just uh, put this new problem button here. So it's going to load like this. Now, I might want to right-click and fix the object, right-click, absolute position on screen, um, just to neaten things up a little bit. Obviously, I probably want to right-click here, fix it, right-click. Absolute on screen just kind of keeps it and just in case a student zooms out. I'll do the same for this one Because uh, I tend to be a stickler when it comes to you know organization on my uh, GeoGebra palette screen here Whatever so there you go and I'll right click and I'll get rid of the grid because I don't need that anymore now Look how much nicer that looks, huh? Now we're gonna upload this to GeoGebra. So I'm gonna go here to uh, Let's see here my GeoGebra page I'm gonna go to new activity right over here click and uh, let's see, uh, quiz demo adding integers. Right, and did I actually save this file at all? Uh, I did not. So let me save. Uh, let's say, uh, let's call it adding integers. I like to save it on my hard drive too, even though once I upload it online, I don't really need it anymore. Uh, there. And so now um, let's go here and we'll go to, we'll insert a GeoGebra element. I often create things online, I often create it offline, whatever, but uh, we'll upload applet, choose a file from uh, wherever, right here. There it is, double click and uploading. And now, uh, a lot of times, you know, this, this, is, this, is a, this window screen is way, 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 way too big. So what I'm gonna do is literally uh, shrink it up. So under advanced settings, right? I can just type in what I want. So I, make, I usually like to make it 800 by 500. That's really conducive to small Chromebook screens. In terms of loading, I can also go to the lower right here and just drag a little bit more, right? So I can hit new problem, try again, whatever. But, you know, none of this needs to be enabled. We're all good. So I hit save and close. And let's see how it looks like online. Quiz demo, adding integers. Click on it. So negative 6 plus 9 is 3. Correct. All right, new problem. Negative 4 and negative 8 is a negative 12. Correct and so on and so forth, okay? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, how you can do a basic one like uh, like that, okay? So um, stop sharing here. Let's see, where did you all go? There you are. Um, that's how we uh, do that. So um, one a little longer than I wanted to. Next screencast, I'll show you how I make one that's a little more advanced where students drag two points on a line to match a given slope there so they can see if they can graph a line with a given slope. Do that maybe in a few days or so. So, um, but uh, nonetheless, thank you for watching and uh, have a good evening.